Hello, daffodils, you little harbingers of springtime. Although, in North America, should you be our harbinger of springtime? Daffodils, are they native to the United States and North America? Non-native? Or are they nasty little invasives? <clears throat> daffodils are non-native to North America and the United States. There are 40 to 200 different species of daffodil, depending on your source, and not a single daffodil species is native to the United States or North America. The confidence interval on this, very high. Now, <clears throat> although they are non-native, they are not considered invasive because they don't cause significant environmental harm, they don't grow quickly and out of control, and they don't disrupt local plant communities and ecosystems, generally speaking. They are non-native though, meaning that they didn't originate here in North America. A native plant is something that originates in a particular place and is part of the balance of nature in that place that has developed and adapted there for, well, really thousands of years. So plants that are here in the United States that have been here since before European settlement are generally considered native. So daffodils then are quite non-native. Okay, so we're going to talk about where daffodils are actually from, how they got here, and what you might plant instead that's native and similar-ish to daffodils, but will do miles more for supporting the plants, pollinators, bugs, and butterflies in our own beautiful country. Okay. So check this out. Daffodils are native to Mediterranean forests, some meadows, and woodland edges. Think of like Spain, Portugal, Morocco, Italy, Western France. That's the areas we're talking about here. Kind of your Southern Europe and Northern Africa areas. Most of the daffodils that we see today are hybrids and cultivars, which is to say they're kind of bastards of the original wild daffodils. There are, in fact, something around 32 thousand daffodil hybrids. Daffodils originally were somewhat smaller and basically yellow as opposed to some of the white and pink type larger daffodils you find now. <clears throat> Mention of daffodils goes far back into history. Daffodils have been found placed in ancient Egyptian tombs. They've been uh, found on frescoes in Pompeii. So we also have the ancient Greeks mentioning daffodils and describing them. We're talking about Pliny the Elder, Theophrastus, and Dioscorides. And this all makes sense based on where daffodils are native to, around these places where the ancient Greeks found themselves, as well as the Egyptians. So from 531 to 579 was this Persian ruler, Kos Kosrau, uh, who notably hated daffodils. Uh, Daffodils were introduced to the Far East Oriental cultures somewhere after that, around the 900s. There may be mention of daffodils in the Bible. And so, okay, <clears throat> we've got the ancient Greeks mentioning daffodils, and then we know that the Romans brought daffodils to England. So in the medieval times, which is like the 400s to like around 1492, and the Renaissance times, which is around the 1400s to the 1700s, we see writers mentioning daffodils, such as William Turner and Albert Magnus. And then if you move forward in time, around the 1500s in the Netherlands, daffodils finally started really seeing popularity similar to the tulip. So I also have a video on is it native or non-native uh, for tulips, so you can learn a little bit more about tulip popularity. In 1588, Joachim Camerarius the Younger has nine types of daffodils, as mentioned, being in his garden in England. In 1597, we've got Gerard in England writing, We have them all and every one of them in our London gardens in great abundance. And then around the 1700s, daffodils really probably started ending up in more people's gardens. In 1739, a Dutch catalog had over 50 varieties of daffodil. In the 1750s, just moving forward in time here, Carl Linnaeus classified and finally named the daffodil genus Narcissus, with Narcissus poeticus being the wild type species for daffodil. Although don't forget that the ancient Greeks had already described daffodils, but Linnaeus was the guy that really got our plant classification charts and names going in a standardized way. 
So now we're up to how daffodils came over to us here in the United States. Daffodils got here in the early colonial days. Monticello, the home of Thomas Jefferson, is known to have had daffodils, and that was in the 1770 to 1826 ballpark. Uh, <clears throat> 1789 to 1820 is really the golden age of daffodils being used in American gardens. Uh, so we're talking about the wild type species, Narcissus poeticus, jonquils, which is a type of daffodil, Narcissus minor, Narcissus pseudo-narcissus, and then from about uh, 1820 to 1860, daffodils took on more of a filler status in American gardens. And so, as is the case quite often, wealthy people will get these non-native exotic flowers in their gardens, and then slowly they trickle down to everybody else, and when that happens, these uh, non-native exotic flowers start becoming more filler and a little less sought after uh, because they're no longer special if just anyone can get them. Even so, by the late 1800s, daffodils had really become an important commercial crop in the Netherlands, uh, <clears throat> and this is really where so many of our daffodil hybrids and our daffodils uh, that we buy today come from, the Netherlands. But of course, don't forget, they did not originate in the Netherlands. So daffodils are perennial and clump forming. However, like I said, they are not invasive, which means that anytime you see a daffodil, you can be almost entirely certain that someone put them there or nearby. So alrighty, you get it now. Daffodils did not come from the United States. They came from the Mediterranean region and Southern Europe. So let's talk about alternatives to daffodils that you could grow in your yards here in North America to support local nurseries and businesses, support the bees and butterflies and plants and ancient ecosystems from here, North America. So what we're looking for are native flowers that come up early around March or April, native flowers that are bright and happy yellow, and I've got about eight options for you to consider. The first is marsh marigold, which is uh, scientifically Calpha palustris. The second is early buttercup, scientifically called Ranunculus fascicularis. There's also swamp buttercup, which is Ranunculus septentrionalis. No, septentri mm, septentrionalis. <laughs> <laughs> we also have bellwort, which is Uvularia grandiflora. There's the yellow prairie violet, Viola nutali. Golden alexanders, which are Zizia aurea. The white trout lily, look at this lovely little fella. Erythronium albidum. There's also bloodroot. Sanguinaria canadensis. And don't worry, that is not a bloody plant. <clears throat> and so also, maybe you want the very first flower that will bloom in the spring, often as early as February or March. So forget about other things that look like daffodils, sort of. You just want the very first thing that'll come up, depending on where you live, of course. Let me present to you hepatica. So here's sharp-lobed hepatica. Amazing, right? Comes up so early. And finally, if you adore your yellow daffodils and you just cannot get rid of them for a native plant instead, maybe you can keep some of your daffodils, but you'd like to complement them with an early spring bloomer that is a complementary color, purple. So try this on for size. Virginia bluebells. Mertensia virginica. And so this comes up right around the time of daffodils. And how lovely would they look together? Yellow daffodils, purple Virginia bluebells, delightful. I also have this image here that I found, which I just loved, of Virginia bluebells and trillium. So trillium is trillium grandiflora. And then it's not the best image ever, but it is quite lovely. And these also come up very early in the spring. So you could ditch the daffodils for some trillium and Virginia bluebells as well. Okay, <clears throat> and finally, 
If you're interested in getting some of these early spring bloomers that are native to our own amazing country, be sure to search with the scientific name, which I will have the scientific names for everything in the description box below. If you search for a native flower to buy, uh, you can often find some of the native flower, but you'll get a ton of hybrids uh, if you don't specifically search with that scientific name. And I'm not getting any kickbacks here or anything, but there are a couple online nurseries that are really great for sticking to just native flowers. Uh, they don't veer into hybrid or cultivar territory at all. And so any flower you click on at those nurseries, you can be assured that it's native, which is so helpful. So one of them is Prairie Moon Nursery, and the other one is Prairie Nursery. Similar names, two different nurseries, both are great. And so those are the places you'll go if you want to get a native plant that, you know, one of the ones I mentioned that are bright yellow, early spring bloomers to replace your non-native daffodils with.